Before we begin, you'll need to identify which differential your Jeep has. Sometimes you'll get a different differential in the front versus the back. All Rubicons use Dana 44 differentials both in the front and rear axles. The Dana 44 is easy to identify because the bottom of the differential housing is almost pointed. Assuming they haven't been lost over the years, you'll notice that there are tags that identify information about each axle. For example, you'll notice this one here has 410 axle ratio gears. On the other side is another tag. This one indicates that we should use 75W140 SYN for synthetic fluid. This is where it can get a little bit confusing. Jeep Wrangler Rubicons from 2003 to 2006 were incorrectly labeled on the rear Dana 44 axle as requiring the use of 4 ounces of friction modifier. The reason this was is that in the past, Dana 44 axles that had a limited slip rear differential, called a track lock, required the use of limited slip friction modifier so that the clutch packs could transfer power from the left to the right. With the advent of the Rubicon and the selectively lockable torsion differential, which when open actually is a limited slip using gears that transfers power left to right, it does not require the use of a friction modifier because there are no clutch packs. So, if you're servicing an 03 to 06 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, do not use friction modifier in the rear axle. Use straight synthetic 75W140 weight gear oil, specified GL5. Once you've determined which axle your Jeep has, as well as how much and what type of fluid you need to purchase, you'll want to round up the following items before we begin. You'll need a receptacle capable of holding however much fluid it is that we're going to drain. You'll need some brake cleaner to clean out the inside of the differential housing once we've drained the fluid. You'll need some paper towels. I like to keep some simple green handy. You can use it on virtually anything. You'll also need to have a torque wrench capable of measuring 30 foot-pounds of torque. You want to have a short ratchet with a half-inch socket for removing the differential housing cover bolts. You'll need to have a short extension if you have a Dana 44 axle for removing the drain plug. Uh, 3 8 inch is the correct size. You'll also want to have some razor blades, as well as some sort of putty knife to scrape the remaining gasket material off of the differential housing itself. Lastly, you'll need to have some new RTV sealant with which to make a new gasket when we put the cover back on the differential. I would recommend using Permatex brand, I've never had any trouble with them. And the Ultra Series, particularly the gray, works very well, never had any significant leaks, and it seems to do really well even if you hit the cover on rocks hard routinely, which I do. On Dana Model 44 axles, changing the fluid is a lot easier, because it has both a drain plug and a fill plug. Always remember to loosen the fill plug before you let all the fluid out via the drain plug, because if you can't replace the fluid, you've got a problem. Putting the fluid back in the differential will be significantly easier if you have some sort of fluid transfer pump. I'm a big fan, as you may know from my other videos, of using these really inexpensive little pump action fluid pumps. You can get these at any auto parts store. They cost a couple of bucks and they work just fine. There are faster ways to do it, but for the money, those work just fine for me. Since we'll be working with a Dana 44 model axle today, we will need 60 ounces of SAE 75W140 GL5 specific fully synthetic gear and axle lubricant. We'll begin by putting our receptacle underneath the differential and then removing the fill plug to check the fluid level and quality. Before removing the fill plug I would clean around it just to make sure that there's no risk of getting any dirt inside the differential. Next, using a 3 8 inch ratchet, remove the fill plug of the differential. Your differential fluid should be fairly clear, and it generally smells disgusting. You also may notice some extremely fine metal particles with the fluid that may drain out. That is normal. Also, the fill plug is magnetic, 
So some of the metal particles that would be in suspension inside of your differential, causing wear, will typically be magnetically bound to the plug itself. Now using a ratchet with a short extension, 3 8 in size, remove the drain plug of the Dana 44 axle. Try to hold the plug to one side so you don't make a complete mess here. Alright, so that's good. Our fluid is fairly clear. What you do not want to see is fluid that looks like a chocolate milkshake. If it looks like a chocolate milkshake, it means that you almost certainly had water mixed in with your differential. So there's a good chance that either your gasket had failed, or far more likely, it means that you need to replace your axle seals. Just like the fill plug, the drain plug is also magnetic. You can see some of the magnetic debris on the end of that plug. Using a clean paper towel, wipe the metal particles off of the magnetic drain plug. If you're working on anything besides a Dana Model 44 axle, you'll need to remove the cover in order to drain the fluid. Now a quick tip is to remove all of the bolts securing the cover except for one or two on top. That allows you to tilt the cover forward, opening the bottom, the fluid will drain down as opposed to pulling it off and having it go everywhere. So we use our half inch socket and ratchet to work our way around the outside and remove all of the bolts except for the top one or two. Next using a hammer or whatever else you have laying around that's heavy and a putty knife See if you can work the cover off. Sometimes this is very easy, sometimes it's a royal pain. There we go. And just use the putty knife to work your way around the outside. That'll break the seal. Make sure you have your drain pan underneath it. Now if this were any other model axle, you'd want to gently pry the cover away while the majority of the fluid drains out. Once the majority of the fluid has drained, then you can remove the top two bolts and remove the cover. Now put some eye protection on and using brake parts cleaner, thoroughly clean the inside of the differential housing. Now you want to give the differential a good 15 or 20 minutes to drip dry. And then when you're finished with that, use a clean rag or a lint-free paper towel to remove any excess fluid from the bottom. While your differential finish is draining, we'll use a razor blade to cut and scrape 
the leftover RTV gasket maker from the differential cover. Truly it's faster if you just scrape. Once you have all of the residue scraped off the outside, make sure it's really clean. I would even give the cover a few squirts of brake cleaner. imperative that it is absolutely spotless. Any residue at all will prevent the RTV that we're going to lay down to make a gasket from making a proper seal. Now carefully use a razor blade to scrape any remaining silicone off of the differential itself. Make sure you keep it out of the inside. Sometimes you might want to put a, a clean shop rag around this so as to avoid any particles from landing on it. As a final cleaning step, take a brake cleaner's soaked paper towel and wipe the edge of the housing to get any remaining residue off. Just like with the cover, it's really, really important. It is imperative that there be absolutely no residue left. Otherwise, we won't get a seal. And the seal has to hold up for years, or at least until your next deep water crossing. Next, using a little bit of brake cleaner, we'll want to clean off the bolts that secure the cover to the differential. Once you're absolutely certain that your differential cover and differential surface are perfectly clean, go ahead and open your RTV sealant. Screw on the cap. Then using a razor blade, you're going to want to cut the end so that it has about an eighth of an inch opening. Now using our ultra gray RTV sealant, we're going to lay down a bead of silicone about an eighth of an inch thick. Then while the silicone is still wet, we're going to put our cover on the differential and tighten the bolts finger tight. Be sure to read the instructions for whatever type of gasket maker that you're using because most of them recommend that while you make the parts immediately after applying the sealant, they do recommend that you let it dry for about an hour before you tighten the bolts to torque specifications. After that, we need to allow 24 hours so that the RTV can fully cure before we fill the differential with differential fluid. After an hour has passed, we can use our torque wrench to tighten all of the bolts down to 30 foot-pounds.
Now that it's been 24 hours since we installed the cover last night, the RTV has set and cured completely, so we can use our torque wrench to install the drain plug to 25 foot-pounds of torque. So let's set that. Put your 3 8 inch ratchet extension on your torque wrench. Position your drain pan underneath the differential. Using our inexpensive fluid transfer pump, we will now fill the differential full of fluid. When fluid starts coming out the fill hole, the differential is full and you can replace the cap, tightening it to 25 foot-pounds. Wipe off the fluid and you are all done. Now if you happen to be a little bit OCD and if you've ever watched any of my videos, you all know that I am, you can use a little bit of spray paint to cover up any rust you may have found on your differential cover. So let's do that, then we're done. 